Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill Friday, 1st of September 2023. Today was the day that the transfer deadline day closed. And oh boy, what a day it was. Um, we assumed as Millwall fans that our business had been done and dusted. Because we're not money bags, Millwall. We don't have an endless pot of money to go out and finance deals. Um, but uh, deals were done. Because uh, two, two players left. Two players come in. We nearly got the big one in the bag. And there's so much going on. I don't know where to start. So I'm going to start at the end of the day with the target man signing that nearly happened and then it didn't. This is from southernnews.co.uk. Mill linked with sensational deadline day sweep for former striker Kiefer Moore. The Lions could potentially spring one last surprise on the final day of the transfer window. This came out at the end of the day, uh, very late. Uh, Mill have been heavily linked with a sensational move for Bournemouth's Kiefer Moore in the final hours of the transfer window. The Lions looked all done with their transfer business after welcoming more on that Ryan Longman and Alan Campbell to the club today as part of a two deadline day incomings, but they may not be done as unconfirmed reports claim they are looking to add more firepower to their strike force, a position Millwall were believed to be satisfied with. Uh, Welsh international Moore has been at Bournemouth for two years and was part of the squad who gained promotion to the Premier League at the end of the 21 22 campaign. He went on to score four goals in his debut season in England's top tier. 31 year old's best goal scoring seasons in the Championship with 20 goals for Cardiff City in 2020 21 and 17 goals for Barnsley across 2018 and 19. The signing will potentially add more goals to the Mills front line, which is currently headed out by Tom Bradshaw and Kevin Nisbet. Moore can currently boast 47 goals in the Championship across many campaigns with various clubs. Yes. Now, we don't know what's true or not. Um, but it it did come out that the deal was done and dusted, uh, a season-long loan, pending uh, something else happening. And that something else was uh, Bournemouth signing a replacement. And because that didn't happen, they pulled the plug on Kiefer Moore to Millwall. It seemed like Kiefer Moore agreed to deal with Millwall, and then it was up to the clubs to do the deal. So this is from footballleagueworld.co.uk. A late transfer twist shared involving Millwall and Leicester. Pats and Dakar will not be joining Bournemouth from Leicester with Kiefer Moore's deal with Millwall also off. So this seems to be the reason why we didn't sign Kiefer Moore. Leicester City striker Pats and Dakar's move to Bournemouth has fallen through, leaving his future uncertain. He's yet to make an appearance under new boss Enzo Maresca. Uh, Kiefer Moore will also remain at Bournemouth, despite a deal being agreed for him to join Millwall. This is a setback for Millwall, who have struggled for goals. Indeed. Uh, Dakar, uh, blah, 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 I don't care about Dakar. Leicester City's uh, Patson Dakar will not be joining Bournemouth as he's moved to the Premier League side, fell through with Kiefer Moore going to Millwall either, and then they just repeat. Why are they just padding it out? Um, as is often the case, the transfer was linked to another. As Bournemouth had hoped to create space in the squad by letting more leave the wall, and a deal had been agreed for the target man to make the switch to the capital. So they are saying here that the deal was agreed. Uh, but the same update stated that the Welsh international was set to remain with the Cherries. Now that will be a setback for Garra as he started to struggle for goals in the early part of the season. And he had hoped to add a different dynamic to his attack with the powerful Moore, who has shone at this level in the past with Cardiff. Uh, with Kevin Nisbet, Tom Bradshaw, and Zion Fleming as the main attacking options, the boss will feel he has enough quality to cope over the next few months, and a challenge will be to get those players firing. Uh, Nisbet scored his first league goal for the club in the win over Stoke last time out, and will hope to build on that in the future. Uh, what next? Well, maybe in January we go back and keep more, especially if we're uh, still in distance at the top half of the table. Um, if list if uh, Bournemouth can get their shit together and sign a replacement, because uh, if the player agreed the deal, um, shows that he does want to come to us. There's another one we've been lim linked with in the past and. It, uh, we keep going back in for it. We just uh, have it happen. So, 
this happened right at the end of the day. Um, I think we got it announced around around turn ten o'clock or so that it wouldn't be happening, which is a shame. Um, earlier in the day, very early in the day. Here we go. Alfida saying Pet Andres Vogelsama has gone back to Germany. Uh, this is from southernnews.co.uk. Mill announced the departure of Andres Vogelsammer on deadline day. The 31-year-old experienced only, once full, uh, only one season at the Den is now moving back to Germany. Andres Vogelsammer has left Mill by mutual consent set to join Hanover 96 on transfer deadline day. The move comes uh, with the club believed to still be in the market to land new players and beef up their squad. Uh, Vogelsammer Arrived at the club last August from Union Berlin and made 45 appearances for the club. Uh, he has also come off the bench in the last two games against Norwich City and Stoke City. Proved to be his final appearances in the Times shirt. Uh, the 31-year-old scored three goals during his time at Mill, including back-to-back -back games against Reading and Swansea City in March. He is now expected to return to Germany after a single season and then after his contract was mutually terminated by Millwall. The forward has played in his native Germany for most of his career, including spells at clubs like Armenia Bielfeld and Heidenheim 1846. Hanover 96 currently playing the second tier of German football. Vogelsammer told the club's website, If I return to Germany, then only to a club whose path and prospects I'm 100% convinced of. Uh, the year in England in particular was a formative time for me in which I learned a lot. Okay, fair enough. So there you go. So that was uh, the first one. And then the other one, uh, George Evans gone. So obviously, George Evans on his way. Um, Wrexham. So he's gone to Wrexham. Wrexham signed Mills, George Evans, and Arsenal's uh, Arthur Unconfal. Uh, this is from bbc.co.uk. Uh, Wrexham have signed Mill midfielder George Evans on a two year contract, and uh, Arsenal goalkeeper Arthur. Or Conquo on loan for the rest of the 2020 season. Evans, 28, who can also play as a centre that came through the ranks of Manchester City and has also played for Reading and Derby County. Evans joined Mill in 2021 and has made 60 appearances for the Lions. Evans said he was delighted to join Wrexham. He added, I'm really excited to sign and I'm desperate to get going. I'm ready for a big challenge and hopefully a really positive season. Cheadle Born Evans has represented England for under 17 and under 19. Um, and then they talk about the um, design. But yeah, we're going to Wrexham. So you, you think, well, how the might have fallen, Wrexham, huh? League Two, Wrexham. Uh, uh, Wrexham are probably one of the biggest clubs in uh, USA at the moment. Uh, they did some kind of Netflix. I don't know if it was on Netflix or what. Some kind of documentary. Now everyone here who watched that in America seems to be fans of Wrexham. It's kind of weird how that goes, but. Um, yeah, Wrexham are a massive team in America and around the world. Um, no, they have a lot of money. They've got rich owners, uh, rich and celebrity owners. So it may be League 2 Wrexham, but it's Wrexham. So I'm pretty sure um, they're obviously trying to make moves to win the league. They're not messing around down there. Um, so here we go, they're signing Mills, George Evans. Uh, so that's it, so Vogel Summer out, George Evans out. Trying to get Kiefer Moore in, didn't happen. But we did get two players in. The one, one, one of them that was mentioned yesterday as a rumour, and another one that we were linked with before, uh, and he chose to go to Luton Town. So first up, Ryan Longman. Ryan Longman has joined Mill on loan. Uh, this is from millfc.co.uk, the club's official website. Mill Football Club is delighted to announce the signing of Ryan Longman on a season-long loan from Hull City. The 22-year-old attacker who can play in a number of positions became Garrett's seventh signing of the summer transfer window. Longman, originally from Red Hill in Surrey, began his professional career uh, at Brighton and the Hove Albion made his debut in the 2019-20 season as the Sig Hiles took on Aston Villa in a Carabao Cup tie. Uh, the whole City man then joined AFC Wimbledon on loan for the 2020-21 campaign, scoring nine times in all competitions, including two in the London derby against Charlton Athletic. 
Originally joining the Tigers on loan before completing the permanent move, Longman had 36 appearances and 5 more goals to claim across 21-22 season with a further full season at the MKM Stadium taking place in 2022 3 uh, Ryan will be available for Saturday Sky Bet Championship trip to Birmingham City subject to receiving a relevant EFL FA clearance. He will wear the number 11 shirt during his time at the Den. Ryan is a player we know really well, having tried to sign him previously, so we are very pleased to add him to our squad, said Alex Hall, Mills Director of Football Operations and Recruit. He gives us another option in forward wide and wing back areas on both sides of the pitch and the ability to score and create goals from different positions. His work ethic and the intensity with uh, which he trains and plays will really suit our culture. Um, so yeah, he's 22, so I think he's being brought in as a squad player, I think, just to fill in gaps here and there, obviously. I think saying he's an attacker, but he's also a mentioning wing back there. I think he's right-sided. Um, I'm not too sure, but um, we'll see. We'll, we will see. Um, yeah, I think he's just being brought in as a squad player. He's the new, new George Evans, basically. Uh, he's sit on the bench and maybe being brought on here and there. Um, now, the other player we signed, Alan Campbell. You may remember him. We were linked to signing him from Motherwell. It didn't happen. He chose to go to Luton Town, which in retrospect seems a bloody brilliant move because he helped get them into the Premier League. Um, but obviously now they're in the Premier League. They are now casting aside so many of the players that got them into the Premier League because they want to stay in the Premier League, which seems a stupid move. But uh, hey-ho, this is a loan move. So obviously if Luton get relegated, which I think is almost certain they will, uh, you can go back there and uh, resume playing for them in the championship. And hopefully there's no hard feelings. But uh, this is also from Mill FC. Mill will complete Alan Campbell loan move. Mill Football Club is delighted to announce the son of Alan Campbell on a season-long loan from Luton Town. The 25-year-old midfielder becomes Garrow's eighth summer signing of this, this transfer window and the second to join on deadline day. Scott's career began at Motherwell, where he scored in his third professional appearance, going on to make 160 appearances across seven years. Uh, with Europa League experience to his name, Campbell then moved south to Luton Town in the summer of 2021, making almost 90 appearances across two seasons in all competitions, as the Hat has completed, uh, competed in back-to-back -back playoff campaigns in the second tier, eventually winning promotion to the Premier League in the latter. The tenacious box-to-box -box midfielder Campbell will be available for selection for Saturday's Skybet Championship trip to Birmingham City, subject to the relevant clearance from the EFL FA. He will wear the number 14 shirt during the 2324 campaign. We're delighted to have Alan join us, said Alex Aldridge, Mills Director of Football Operations and Recruitment. He brings with him the experience of championship promotion with Luton. Uh, with George Evans departing us, the opportunity to recruit Alan to strengthen our midfield options was one that we didn't want to pass up given his excellent performances last season and the type of character we know he is. Alan is very popular at Luton, both as a player and a professional, and we're really looking forward to working with him. Uh, so there you go. There you go. What can you do? Two out, two in. Uh, two midfielders, one attacking midfielder and one very much a central midfielder. Um, why though? Why? Well, here we go. Let's find out why. From London News Online.co.uk, Mill Boss explains why no more centre back additions before transfer window deadline. Uh, Gary Rowett has explained why Mill have not looked in to bring not look to bring in a defender before the closure of the summer transfer window. The Lions have wrapped up their expected business with the lone arrivals of Ryan Longman and Alan Campbell from Hull City and Luton Town, respectively. And there you go, there's pictures of them. Some of the club's fan base uh, had expected a centre-back arrival, uh, but Rowett told the South London Press, uh, we've, got, we've got Ryan Leonard, Sean Hodgson, Jake Cooper, Wes Harding, Moyer Wallace, so five centre-backs at the club. If we play a back three, we've got two spare. If 
exactly play that ball. We've got three spare to me. That's more than enough. Every club can try and improve in an area, but uh, you have to try and maximise your budget to get the best out of the group. What you can't do is have extra players just to have them. Uh, we have to run quite close with what we've got. Certainly, that was not a priority area for us. So, he's going to go with the centre-backs that we've got. Um, and that's it. That's all. That's the story. Fair enough, I guess. Um, it would have been nice to add Kiefer Moore. That would have been the cherry on the top. That would have been the, the cream on the pie. That would have been beautiful. That would be the target man that we're looking out for as, a, as option B. When option A, or as it almost certainly does, fouls. So, we got few more international call-ups, uh, age-restricted ones. Uh, Mills, Brook Norton, Cuffey, well, he's Arsenal, really, he's on loan at the moment, but I know what you mean. Uh, it's called up to England's under-21 squad. So much like Charlie Cresswell last season, being an uh, under-21 international, we've got a Brook Norton, Cuffey. He's, an, he's an, also an under-21 international, he's got called up uh, now. So he's been called up for their, for their one, I think, one September. International fixture. Uh, Lee Carsey set up ahead of the uh, UEFA 2024 Under-21 European Championship qualifier against Luxembourg. Um, where is that? Is that home or away? That's away. So I guess if you live near Luxembourg, maybe that might be something to look into going to. Have you been to a game in Luxembourg? Have you ever been to Luxembourg? Why would you go there if it wasn't to watch football? Um, maybe you've just driven through it. Uh, to go to a better country, but yeah, there's the game Monday the 11th. So, in this international break, we should be every day there's going to be something new to talk about because you've got loads and loads and loads of players on international duty. Another one here we go Romain, Romain Essa receives, receives England under 19s call up. So, here we go Romain Essa has been called up by England under 19s. <coughs> For well, their two September international fixtures, Simon Rusk's side, who uh, will take on Germany and Switzerland and Spain as they prepare for Euro qualifiers in October and November, uh, with SA, who scored his first England goal last time out, available for his next uh, SA joins Kevin Nisbet, George Savile, Matilda Sarkic, Tom Bradshaw, Idan Rumaku, and Brock Norton Cuffey in action over the break. Uh, any further additions to Mills' international call ups will be confirmed on MillFC.co.uk. Further, who else is there? Who else is there? Bloody hell, that's a lot. Uh, and here's, here are the games. Um, they are, it's a Spain training camp sort of situations. I'd, they probably won't be shown on TV or, you know. Uh, England under 19s versus Germany, Wednesday the 6th of September. So that's probably going to be the first one up. No, next, it's next week. Uh, kick off at 6 p.m. and then uh, versus Switzerland. On Saturday the 9th, kickoff 1 p.m. So there you go. Two more international lions today. And that's kind of it for the news. I've had to cut it short. There were interviews with, um, obviously, Friday. So we've got uh, Friday's edition of South London Press. And Thursday was yesterday, so we've got Southern News. And there's interviews with Sarkic and Cooper, um, which I just can't get around to talking about. Because we've had the transfer deadline day today, and there's a game tomorrow that we need to preview because it's uh, early in the morning, 12:30 kickoff. Um, early. So let's get into that then. So here we go. Uh, this is from 11v11.com. It's the historical record head to head between Millwall and Birmingham, and this is set up uh, Birmingham City at home versus Millwall. And you can see very much over the years, we haven't played them that many times uh, barely been in the same division at the same time um quite not many wins not many wins got two in a row 1967 1968 um and then not another win until we get to 2015 and remarkably this has been quite a fruitful uh, away fixture for Millwall seeing that in the last seven games, we've not lost. In the last seven games, although the last four have been draws, which is weird in itself, the last four in a row have been draws. Uh, last year it was a nil-nil, before that 2-2, and then before that another nil-nil. 
and then before that a 1-1. One, one. Then before that, it was three uh, wins in a row. Obviously, around the time, Birmingham have kind of struggled. They've fallen off. They've had bad owners, financial stuff, and they, they've obviously turned a corner now. And they've got some kind of American owners. Uh, Tom Brady's involved. Um, but that takes time to to move on. But they're unbeaten so far this season. Um, so there actually does look like they're being well run now. Will that be enough for them to uh, to win tomorrow? To do something in this league this season? I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, in terms of the, the record up going up to there, not that bad. Not that bad. Um, there have been previously before we started doing well up there some quite heavy defeats. A 4-0 in 2013, a 3-0 in uh, 2011, uh, another 4-0 in 2001, um, and then the very first game up there, 1946, October, 4-0 defeat. So, it is a game we can get smacked in. Um, so what are we on? We're on the we're on the second of November, second uh, of September. Have we ever played up there in September? Uh, the eleventh of September, twenty eleven, and that was a three defeat. Um. Okay. Okay. So there you go, there's the head to head. Now moving on to who's who scored com and here we go. Just to bring it into a bit more clarity. If we look on the uh, before that, if we look on the right hand side, match facts, Birmingham have drawn their last four home matches against Mill in all competition. Yes. Uh Birmingham have seen under two and a half goals in eleven of their last thirteen matches against uh Mill in all competition. So that's home and away. Under two and a half goals in 11 of 13. So it's not a goal scoring game. Apparently, Berman have been drawing at both half time and full time in the last four home matches against Millwall in all competition. So, those draws, the last four games being draws, they were draws at half time and then draws at full time as well. And here we are, you can see them move back into the left hand side in the middle. Uh, in the last six games up there, they have only scored three goals. We've only scored six, but uh, we failed to score in two, and they failed to score in four games. Uh, two of those have been nil-nil draws. Um, right. Uh, damn. So here's obviously the games so far this season. Not many to go on, but if we just switch it up anyway. Uh, so their home games so far this season, uh, a 1-0 defeat against Leeds, or a 1-0 win against Leeds, 2-1 win against Ball, uh, Plymouth, and uh, in the Cup, 3-1 defeat at home to Cardiff, and a player sent off. And Mills away form, a 1-0 win at Middlesbrough, and then a 3-1 defeat against Norwich, which, by the way, was also an early kickoff. And uh, one thing I mentioned about that is watching... Watching that Norwich game, um, seeing it before the game, you know they do the thing on Sky where they sort of they take pictures of the players walking in with their wash bags and their bags and stuff. And you can see just Kevin Nisbet, he looked really tired, like he'd had a really shit night's sleep. Um, I know Garrett has probably already picked his team, it's already decided. But I would say to him, like, have a look at the players and look and see. Do they look like they're knackered. Do they look like they haven't had a good night's sleep? And if they do, then don't put them in the team. Um, because that might not be the best thing to do. Um, now, moving on to the prediction from whoscored.com, if we can. Um, yes, let's do that. Uh, so, here they have, they seem to have quite a few players injured. Um, the player that we were linked to, Jay Stansfield, uh, he, from the Fulham player, decided to join Birmingham. He scored for them. He came off the bench and scored in their victory over Plymouth. So, there's that. Um, we've seen the match facts already. Prediction. 
Birmingham had new signing Jay Stansfield to thank uh, last weekend uh, as he stopped his time goal, secured a 2 1 win against newly promoted Plymouth. John Eustace's side have been rejuvenated by an impressive summer transfer window and have dropped just two points in four games this season. Millwall returned to winning ways against Stoke last time out after Kevin Nisbet's first half goal broke the deadlock in the lead up to half time. That win will be a major boost to Gary Rowan's side with the former. Blues manager facing heaps of pressure following back to back league defeats. And they say Birmingham 1, Millwall 0. Birmingham 1, Millwall. Okay. Uh, now moving on to Sky Sports and David Pratton's prediction. What does he say? And here we go with the very first one at the top. Even though we're not on Sky, we are kicking off early. It's not on Sky. It's just uh, earlier kickoff because of all the trouble last year that resulted in um, uh, a Mill fan getting hospitalised and not being in a bad way. Uh, the Birmingham train keeps rumbling on. Well, not tomorrow because there's strikes on, mate. Uh, what a start to the season it has been. They won't even be too bothered by their cover exit. In midweek, so long as they keep winning the league. Ah, so they had an extra game midweek. Um, don't know how many players they they swapped out. That might be a factor. If we can hold it tight and then push on at the end against tired legs, bring old uh, bring the talent on uh, at the end of the game against the tired legs of uh, Birmingham, might be something to look out for. Uh, Mill and Gary are out silence and doubt as a win over Stoke last week. This is another of his old alts. He'll be wary of the excitement building around St Andrews. A tight draw here. And Gary, um, David Pratton predicts Birmingham City 1, Millwall 1. Interesting, interesting. So we've got a 1 0, we've got a 1 1. Um, last week was uh, pretty. Massive improvement. That was a home game. Um, obviously, the transfer window has closed. None of the players are going anywhere. Uh, the ones that are gone have gone. Uh, George Evans and Vogel Summer, they've gone. So, the ones that are staying are staying. We've got two new players in. They were training uh, today, I think. And they're in contention. Um, so, we'll see. This is a tough one to pick. Obviously, Birmingham turned it around. We've had a, we've got that good record, and that good record does need to end. Um, it is fine margins, isn't it? Uh, have we draw, have we drawn a game yet this season? We haven't drawn a game yet this season, have we? We haven't. We've we've lost and we've won. I'm probably going to go with them with the, with the draw. Actually, I think I'm probably going to go with them with the draw. Um. Maybe nil nil draw. Maybe another nil nil draw, which would be what that would be the third one in four games. In the last four games, if we go down and see uh yeah, the last two in the last three, so and the one before uh, one in the middle of that was at St George's Day. That was a two two. So I'm probably gonna go for another nil nil draw. Again, obviously Gary Rowe going back to one of his former clubs. Uh, obviously, I think massive turnover since he was there. I don't think any other people are still still there. Andy Marshall uh, used to work there. Paul Robinson, he, uh, Rowett's, one of Rowett's assistant coaches, a massive Birmingham player, played many many games for them. Uh, so obviously they won't want to lose this game. So risk averse. I think there's going to be another nil nil uh, in terms of Birmingham and Millwall. Whether that's a good nil nil in terms of one that we we perform well in and then we just don't manage to score, or whether it's we're holding on for dear life and the, the goalkeeper plays a blinder, I'm not too sure. But the early start, all kinds of factors uh, being involved, I think it's going to be another nil nil. So that's my prediction. My prediction: Burn City nil, Mill nil. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.